good day, folks. This is Hal Anthony coming to you from behind the woodshed, where we intend to open a can of whoop-ass on those misguiding government, mistreating our people, and to stop the subversion of freedom. Out here behind the woodshed, we are not bashful to lay on the wealths of truth that they will teach the lessons to stop government trespass against us, because sparing this rod will most certainly get us the shaft. Persistent. Aren't we persistent? I'm going to have a little bit of an audio problem, I think, right now. Let me see what's going on, if I can get some feedback. I've had a problem this week. If I can get some feedback from the chat room to find out whether or not my levels are right and or I have a audio equalization problem. This has been a... I've been having a problem with my audio. Don't even know if you can hear me at this point. Okay, so thank you, Grim. So the voice is okay. It's not uh, too bassy and not too uh, punchy. I'll just go with this for the time being until I can work this out. Thank you very much for the help. Interrupting the current neo-coronial cricketism to bring you behind the woodshed. This is Cricketude Busting Episode BTW RLM 411. 411. Can you even uh, imagine that? Before the information behind the woodshed, 411. And we're at the end, folks. Donation month. Thank you very much for all your generosity. One more week to do it. Although nothing stops you from bringing that, uh, you know, bringing any uh, donations that you want during the week. That helps to uh, help to keep things going. I, I think it just puts a peace of mind on on everybody and Grimner for sure because he's got the he's got all the work to do on the other side. And uh, so I appreciate all that you've done and all your donations for us. You know, I may not have said so much, but we have monthly don donations going in to various spots. Thank you for those coming in. Again, just to keep a network running, to give us a place to go. As you're going to hear, one of my first stories is, you know, they're, they're, as we know, the social media is cutting out everybody that's going to give out any information, whether it's good or bad, it doesn't matter. Just any information that doesn't toe the line. So it's important to start supporting uh, your independent, your non-dependent uh, broadcast places. Uh, and so the, the clipping, thank you. Let me pull that down. I'll get it down to a little bit more. And uh, I can keep adjusting some of this stuff, but I can't hear it. So it's just a, a guess by whatever you're saying there. Thank you for the feedback. And I'll keep looking over periodically. But So we have a bunch of, as, as I've been asking, and as people are becoming interested, we're getting more people to the network. So it's kind of cool. Again, we got the top 10 countdown with G Gary L and Gigi's boo right after this broadcast. So stick around for the, the, the scheduled, uh, our scheduled, regularly scheduled programming. Otherwise, you, you'll hear it on the, uh, on the uh, playback when uh, Grimner puts that all together. And um, the, this will now get 5, 5 p.m. Eastern uh, for something that's completely disconnected, falling back into a time when things were a little bit more simple, maybe a reminder, maybe how we're going to move forward as we start to watch the nonsense come out on us. And I also understand through my, now my RSS feed, I told you I was going to work on that. Yeah, I can't communicate back and forth through that. But to me, the RSS feed I'm using, and I'll give you a link to, to what I'm using here, uh, it uh, allows me to see feed information just like I would get from Twitter. So, and I don't have to worry about all their nonsense. But uh, Vin E is back with his American dissonance. In fact, it has happened. He's on the air now and doing his broadcast. I think this will be the second one, so you can tune in on Fridays. Uh, for for that, it, uh, I think he's, um, what was that, Fridays at noon central, I think, and um, maybe not singing to the choir so easily. Here, I did it, Vince. I can do it a couple more times today. You can uh, join him and so you too can explore more and join the journey, he says. And I got that from my RSS feed uh, as he's telling me on the uh, Twitter when I go in one time a week to put it in the middle but that he's on air, so... I appreciate to know that, and then then through my RSS feed informed. For those of you that can uh, do this, uh, you just you can get it right through a browser. You can put an RSS feed and go to your favorite websites and put the domain in, put a forward slash feed, and that should get you through a RSS reader all the listings that come off of a broad, uh, off of a web page from a website. 
you know, it doesn't quite work the way I was hoping when we can kind of do an interaction, but that's, I'm still looking at that. We can communicate through RSS. Uh, it's possible if we keep posting pages. But the point is that, that uh, I'm getting a bu almost all the same things that I would see on Twitter through my RSS feed. And they even have, now you can have pictures. So anybody that posts from the website that you want to listen to, you can also pick up the picture for the broadcast or whatever picture attaches to the story. And I'm also, through that RSS feed and form, uh, RLM now has a new show, another new show, on Saturday, 5 p.m. Eastern, with Doc Mike Harris, the redneck dentist, talking about such things as survival. Yeah, that's what we need. We've been talking about Remember we were saying that. We're going to have to get more self-reliant. He's going to actually go into more things that he said I got from the feed, the trapping and hunting and food prep, assuring, assuring you he's not a health food nut, though he was talking about sprouts too. And so we can, we can, uh, excuse me, I got to do something quickly. I'm going to go ahead ex expand some of you here, some clicking, clicking. I'm trying to do some adjustments as we go, but I don't want to do too many of those, but, uh, but anyway, so uh, his broadcast is going to tell us more about how we get back into that self-reliance, even on a small uh, plot of land, if you will. And, uh, he said, uh, you can grow sprouts easily. There, there, Vince, I did it again. Yeah, he did, Vince. You can. Vin E can do that. And uh, so this is getting us back into us being more self-reliant as we watch austerity be dumped on us, as we watch the price of things going up, as we talked for years. I'm really looking around and thinking this is, this is that time. It, there's not really much of an escape from it as they brought the COVID fraud vid 19 in and everyone capitulated and agreed and you know I also found out that uh, Doc, Doc Mike Harris he gets uh, he gets distracted easily too he said so we got another we got did another one Vince for you there you go the in-house RLM public health specialist it sounds like welcome to the network Dr. Mike we'll talk I've never I don't know that I've ever met you but uh, we'll I'm appreciative that you step up and let people know uh, things that uh, maybe we haven't had to practice for a very long time as a people. And uh, so, again, getting the information out, I want to get back right that to get to that really quickly. And the probably uh, the problem of of this information and the control. Remember, the the internet was made for the military as a communication we're just writing on it it's just like the highways when you go read deeply enough you'll find that the highways are really have a military priority and so you start realizing we're in that that occupied we're in that military consequence i keep talking to you all about but wherever you look and if you look far enough you, it's hard not to see it and trying not to say that's the only thing you see but that's a lot of what you see and we're going to again i'll show you we show you this all the time and the first the story i want to bring up here is Someone who, uh, through blacklisted news, uh, Doug Owen, I was on his Oracle broadcast network years ago. He folded that. He started, he continued to blacklist the New West website. But he, he says, uh, we've temporarily limited some of your account features as Twitter is now going against his his feed. And uh, he writes, makes a write-up. I'll give you a link. You can find it yourself essentially from his website. Talking about this, he's finally going to write a little bit about it. But he's, the gist of his idea is, Twitter exists because of the people causing it to exist, our consent, our, our, our use. And I still use it a little bit. I use it a whole lot less, and I'm weaning myself from it. I found I don't need it. It never really did me any good. I don't get that much conversation. I have met some cool people, but it hasn't been enough to put a lot of time to allow them to abuse me through all their interference and intrusions that I'm looking for other things. Like for me, it's RSS feed. I'm not much of a joiner to websites, so you don't see me joining a ton I've just kind of put some things in strategic spots hoping that those will be lasting a, a while just to have the content found so somehow we're going to have to come around and figure out how to do this they may be hitting uh, blacklisted news taking Twitter off he's saying go to Gab I'm not on Gab uh, I don't like I said I'm not much of a joiner I, I, maybe I should have different uh, hit this differently like maybe I should have got on Facebook because that's where everybody went and you kind of can't sing to the choir. You got you got to you got to find the sinners in order to get these people to understand. And in society, if you look uh, reflective to what 
society would do to protect itself in a republic, uh, if you if you can keep it, we have been we have been sorely failing. <laughs> There's nothing failing terribly, and so again, he's uh, he's he's giving the warning. He says he says exactly that. We we give it power, and we give it we. We empower all this, this this data thing, these things, uh, these communication systems, and it's also partly why I've been looking for federated type systems, not Mastodon. There's really, if you look deeper inside the systems, there's really only a few, if any, that are right quite yet for what we actually need in that ghost in the machine type thing. But not many people are even interested in that. You know, thank you, a couple of you keep sending me information. I keep looking and keep researching uh, when I have time. And uh, I'm going to have a little bit more time now that that one main main project is now uh, we finished most of that. We're in the interim stage. I can turn my attention now to all the stuff that's backed up for three weeks, uh, which happens to be this all this system thing and the computer stuff. But, but anyway, so my one of my answers just as an offer, I found uh, I was looking for a feed reader. I found something called Bamboo Feed Reader. It's only uh, offered for Mozilla products, and I'm not so sold on any of these products but it's what we have and a bamboo feed reader gives me little pictures and it gives me a list it's just a feed reader it gives you all the postings that come from a website you subscribe to and there's no censorship between you and that so I, I'm giving you an add-on for your Mozilla browser I was happy with what it came on I've been throwing uh, feed uh, feeds in there like I said for reallibertymedia.com you just add forward slash feed forward slash and I think you get the feed if you want to Go also add one of the one or all the hosts individually, so you get their posts. You can do that too, and so it's uh, pretty pretty interesting that way. It, it just there's a a feature picture that shows up with a listing or no picture at all, and I can go pretty quickly through all of that. Even though and there's not that much communication back and forth, there's none actually. But I'm not much into the communication actually. There's not much that I get interactive with. And again, if you're interested. And you have a question, it's really better for me to see it go through my email at markonthebeast at protonmail.com. So as we get tossed out of places, we're going to have to stay, it's up to us to stay con connected, if you will. And in this case, maybe that's it's not all connected when they throw you away, out and, and dispense with you. So you have to be very vigilant to continue whatever you think you need to do and find the people that will help you to do that. I may suggest a lot of things here, but there's a lot of smart, intelligent, I should say, no, not smart, but intelligent people that are able to work stuff out if we would just kind of get together. As I look over quickly, I don't see any more audio points, but Grimner says there's a Chrome, a Chrome Brave and Chromium link for a feed reader. All you can do is put RSS feed reader and you'll find one so you can get that through the Chrome store. I'm not a fan of Chrome uh, necessarily, but that doesn't mean that I didn't just upload another browser so that I can start talking back on the internet. I found that I've been looking at the Vivaldi browser for a long time, and I finally uploaded it and was able to start using uh, Jitsi Meet again uh, because all the other older browsers are not are not uh, not working. And I, I stick with the older browsers, notwithstanding the threat that they're a security danger because all the plugins I need to use are on those old browsers. The new systems, they don't give you everything that's, that you, the programmers of those plugins can't, either could, can't keep up or don't have the time or do technology or it's not adapted. And so all the stuff I've used for this broadcast and other things, I need to stay with the old browsers. Well, to talk on Jitsi, now I've had to upload a browser I felt I could trust. So I chose the Vivaldi, and I've looked at the Brave browser, and I'm not so thrilled with it. There's too many things. It's like blockchain kind of kills it for me. You can't not be connected up and connected into a system of monitoring with, without all that, even though they tell you it sounds like it's not. It, it's, I don't believe it. I looked around, and I don't, that's where the disconnect is for lots of companies. In fact, Jitsi is a halfway point. And the reason why I believe what they say about their lack of surveillance is because it actually their reason for cutting out, if it's only two parties on Jitsi Meet, they cut out their server. They only use the, the connection server once, and then they cut it out. Why? Because... It was the bottom line. They found out half their bandwidth. They could save half the cost of bandwidth by cutting it out. That was a more most honest reason for not listening in 
as I've ever seen. Is that was probably the the most honest thing that we could rely on. They don't want to spend for listening to people's conversations, and so they have not done that. In part, I trust that to that extent, and so I'll use that that product. Where all, I haven't found all the other ones that are willing to do much of that. When you look at how they connect up systems, when they're keeping track of things, that's our weakness. That's why this uh, peer-to-peer federation, federated type thing may be a better thing using addresses that are not allocated but can be addressed with us. So, anyway, enough on the surveillance, uh, on the, uh, on the security, on the access, on the censorship, on getting and communicating and keeping in touch. We're going to have to work a little bit harder as these people want to continue to uh, do this to us. And uh, so I want to keep now move into my tabs and try to, we may have to run real quick. I've been putting up way too many tabs to talk about. There's just so much to cover every, every week anymore in so many areas. And my, as if it's a problem, I'm talking to a general audience. So I don't know. I hope I am. I know I've got a few people in the, in the, in the chat room. So they respond to me. So I know someone's maybe listening, but the point is, is I, I can't speak to anything in particular, and that's why my email is probably better on the questions, and you know when you send me an email, there's when I can get to it, I get to it and try to thoroughly respond uh, so that puts you on the path, as I say, the pathfinder, where you need to be and go to protect ourselves in these interesting times, if that's not outright criminal. But uh, interesting things come down, even though some of it, you know, we, I look at this and it's always a, a cringe, even relying on the good stuff sometimes. But it gives us insights, and that's what I say. We need to have insights on how we're going to move forward. We use the insights to move forward, and the point about it is we're moving forward on what we try to hold on to that we believe is best. We just don't know for the sake of knowing something. Knowing, uh, Contemplating your navel with all you know is not going to get nothing. Uh, making complaints about the, uh, the system is not going to stop it. Some uh, people jump in, as I suggest, Understand the enemy. It happens to be that unjust system. Jump in and see how they treat you, how they do it. Just don't accept their mistreatment. And by doing that, I've been able to turn around and look at at how to address some of that, even if it's just to meet them and stop them. It's better than being taken down by them. And a lot of my, as you know, anybody who's been listening for any time, my experience is in the land law, the public land law, relative to grants, in mining, mining law, the mining, the load law, the Placer Act, all these things, and the interaction of the agencies trying to take you down out of that high status. And so in dealing with that, I've been, it's been giving me a lot of experience. Maybe, okay, so we did the, did the judicial side before that, but it gave me experience in the administrative side. And when you understand the administrative world you live in, that seems to be the more appropriate way, place to start and where we make our record first, as we've been talking about the COVID, the fraud vid-19. And last week, I hope you really listened to what I was saying. It's going to take a little bit more. In pioneer police states like Oregon, where they put, it's not equal access, where you have to negotiate your access. It's a violation of the ADA front. I hope you took to heart what I was saying, prepared your mind, prepared your paperwork. More importantly, did you send your letter? A simple letter. I put it in the in the, in the uh the Twitter, one letter, one sentence, demanding the first medical report after you've read, read the laws in your state to see that that was required. And then there's four or five steps after that. And get your first letter, because why? You're going to have to show, see, the point on the first one that I've said, get the letter, is that there is no report. Well, you're in that class. If there's no report, then there's no report for you. We're seeing, though, however, with the the imposition of these pioneer police state like Oregon, where they say you get to, you have the right for your equal access, you have to first negotiate, unlike everybody else that's munching the carrot to get along. Uh, you're going to have to sh- possibly show that there's no report, but I would hold that back. I would hold that back and take that as a harm. Now, when you did that, you had to do something different than anybody else to enter in that establishment. Again, it's not a fight against the establishment. They're in fear. You're trying to show that you're not there. You're not available to that submission. Uh, the way that the state of authority has that submission is to find that first medical report. When you ask that there is whether they demand the evidence of the first report and there is none, you're in that class. More specifically, for you negotiating access, you get another, maybe even another letter, another question, is my name on a report? 
And you hold that one back, but you have that available too just to negotiate. Because when you do that, I realized this morning, you're having to give up private information to access that, that establishment where no one else has to access that establishment. That's another violation of the ADA based on a disability. So this whole thing that the answer that the state came up with is a complete violation. It was, as I would explain to you, violate the savings clauses, even through their administrative acts. And the, I told you that was important for that with ORS 183 for Oregon, is the Administrative Procedures Act, and right in there it's a bunch of savings clauses. And they can't run this administration through to deny you your rights before. And this is where I found that out when I was, that's where it came clear, it came to me, looking at property law. And you'll, and this is all about property, the property rights you have in your own self and in your determinations and in your protections about, let's say that we talked about last week, that irrevocable license when someone opens their doors to the public, the irrevocable license they give to you to go do what they've invited you to do is infringed. And so if you start putting your mind more in, in tune with this uh, thing, you'll be able to communicate a lot quicker. As I showed you by the end of the broadcast, I hope I, I explained, once you know the minefield, you just walk through it. You know where all the mines are, and you get there, you can almost leap the whole minefield once you understand what the end is supposed to be. And this is what I've been suggesting is all the time. We try to figure out how to get to the end. We do not, we have to learn the the system, the corruption, in order so that we can eventually avoid the system and corruption. Now, that's not fail safe because we're in an occupied system and until people realize what that means you just can't say oh it's corrupt and do nothing more they're going to be there to interfere with your life and you see that the macro of that is this COVID-19 that's how I told you that back in 2019 I told you this is Operation 20, Hindsight 2020 you didn't respond for the first 20 years to 9-11 they're going to bring the rest on and they're going to see how far they can get. And I think they actually accelerated their schedule. I think they were targeting 2025. I think they did it all in one year. And so this is just on us. And so in the face of all this, in the Supreme Court failing to do all kinds of things, or the Supreme Court doing certain things, we have to learn these are the minefields, these are the barriers, these are the obstacles, and this is the only reason why I talk about a lot of this stuff. Once you start to get a sense of what's going on, you start to realize where the path might be the path of least resistance, more importantly, the narrow path within that, if you will, the valley of the shadow of death, if you please. The death is on each side is those legal fictions. And you did, and I was talking with someone in the chat last night. It's just not about you making an affidavit status based on some record in the state. That doesn't work at all. It doesn't make any sense to me. You have to figure out what the records are they use, and you have to start weaning yourself from those and not referring to them and finding out what you have to refer to. And the, the birth certificate comes to my mind. Lots of people get all freaked out about that. But, you know, all the stuff we've I've ever done in the last 30 years, I've never had to bring up a birth certificate. It doesn't even come relevant. So what's the big worry? But why does everybody focus on that? In my mind, seems to be someone keeps promoting a bad thing and got everybody believing the wrong way. Why? Because no one settled down and went and did the basic research. No one did the read the thing about what the system expects and what it needs, and then start starving it of that. Again, like Doug Owen said, starve Twitter of, of, its, of your participation. Don't click on the links uh, for their ads, and they start they dry up. This is our consent. This is the consent model, the consent of the governed. And the governed isn't just isn't just government or governance. It's anybody who wants to rule over you. And so if you don't have your own sense of rule, your own sense of self, your own sense of property, the rights are pertinent that property. As I told you, the extortion statutes, I broached those again last week. When they, It's not just a trespass against you to not let you in after the license of everyone else. That's a property in you. And that's an official authority. They're relying on an official, uh, the color of an official warrant, which is fraudulent, it is all a felony. That's all felony acts in every state if you just go look at it. So I don't, I don't know what um, I'm having. I just looked over and saw I may have another, some more problem. Got to be careful about moving this too much. I guess I don't have any base on it now, at all. And uh, so let me, 
Let me uh, give it a little bit more, see what happens. I'll just change a little bit. It's a little bit difficult to um, to adjust this over time, though, on the broadcast. So, I'm, excuse me. So, I, I've done a little other adjustment. Hopefully, that'll do a little bit closer. Sorry. Again, it just all, I worked off for all week trying to fix it after the update. As you, I hate doing updates because it does this, and, and I haven't been able to get it back, and I have no way to feedback more than uh, more than I am. In fact, I'm going to drop this off even further just to watch this happen. Okay, I dropped it off a little bit more on the volume. Thank you for being enslaved as well. Sorry, Aunt I. I don't know. Uh, I'm doing my best here. Anyway, moving into the Supreme Court, I wanted to do this a more reading here through the ABA Journal, uh, the American Bar Association, the, the people we, you know, the occupying force in your life, the people, the private guild that made themselves an agency of your state and then took over your judicial branch. And uh, what I talk about regularly and, and how it's not my opinion, it's a fact. We sued, the JMD, Jefferson Mining District, sued the Bar Association, and uh, they failed to answer. They, they defaulted on the very same thing, the sustainable development imposition, the kinds of things that are interfering with the Republican form of government and interfering with private property rights. So... Point being, again, we were able to know right where to hit the beast, if you will. They can't respond. You paralyze it. No, the problem is we are in. A, that's proving it. We're in an occupied thing, and people will look at that. Well, good was it? Well, it's a lot of good if you are on the inside of that, and you understand when we every time we assert that case, no one wants to touch it. And so we're learning where the amoeba, the parasitic amoeba, won't go, and we're learning how to actually do things to affect it, as we all learn in a fallen society how maybe hopefully to stand back up and take charge of what we were responsible to but let me uh, offer this aba journal to scotus the supreme court of, of the united states hands down a rare civil rights victory on qualified immunity and so this is our main, one of our main complaints the immunities are killing us the immunities of officials when you look at your state law that says if you come without a warrant and you violate me and my property or my rights to property and you uh, do it or hand those to a third party, that's felonies. That's what the system does when it does all this stuff. And you have no accountability because they're immune is the problem. And so this adjustment that they make, and there's a, some of the reason why there is this adjust, this balance, but they've certainly got it more onto the sovereign side and forgot that there was someone who wrote what that sovereignty was in a constitution. And this is where the disconnect happens. And this is what I ask people to start understanding so you can get yourself over into a place that they don't mistreat you as a creature of the state. And they do this in everything. In this Tennessee case that I've been helping out, that's the first thing they did. And I identified that by finding out what it's called in equity, in chancery, to negative a character. And I'd known about it before, but I'd never seen it written. And once I saw it, I could see the document that they respond, the government responded with completely negative the character of the relator of the case. That is to cast negative aspersions on the on the the petitioner to claim somehow he hasn't informed the courts for of something cor uh, correctly, and if the court knows about that, that it would negative his claim. And so they do it by fraud, and it's a continuation of fraud. And this is way beyond what, what I just said is probably beyond what most everybody has ever heard or understands to know or look for. And uh, this is our problem as a society. And it's it's learnable. to You can change that by learning more, by reading more. But I know it's a pain, but you have plenty of time with COVID. I don't know what the big, but I really, I thought the COVID was going to be the answer for the whole society, but we just didn't step up. And so my, even though I'm hopeful, it's getting very dim. But here, a procurum decision handed down. Procurum is the entire court of the Supreme Court decided this. Interestingly, Pierre Curum is a response of an administrative claim on that Tennessee case. There was an administrative claim complaint to the Supreme Court and Pierre Curum, they answered in dismissal of even the administrative side. And the point was that is that the, what was alleged in the complaint was that the chief justice was a part of the fraud. In other words, the chief justice was also part of the decision to dismiss, which is the problem the problem with the With the whole the whole case, the whole function of the state judiciary is now now conditioned by the agreement of the other justices because they all decided in deciding their own case in fraud. 
they, they were required underneath that to at least separate themselves and explain how it couldn't be a fraud. In that one th- denial, we've ex- we've shown that there's no justice, which everybody will say that. But did you did you know how it's coming? Did you know how it's how to make the proof so we can show other people? And that, that's even again, we're such a fallen society with what we ought to know. We don't even recognize the stuff that we need to see. Which I told you, that's the condition of the clueless. The clueless don't even have a clue relative to what they need, to, that they don't have a clue. It's it's a dead end. It's a void. And that's the bulk of our society. On the other hand, you have lots of people that will vociferate about how much they understand about how the corruption is, and they'll do nothing to stop it, and they'll blame everybody for trying. And uh, we that, that comes to the same end. But so, procurum decision handed down without briefing and oral argument. Without briefing or oral argument, generally do not get much attention, so it is understandable that the U.S. Supreme Court's ruling about qualified immunity in Taylor and Rios, I pronounced that wrong, might have been overlooked even by civil rights lawyers. And so, civil rights lawyers, what would you think that they would come up with it when you understand that civil rights, Title 42, Section 1981, is your right to pay exactions of every kind, exactions being extortions of every kind, and exactions being wrongful extortions if they were rightful extortions. Now, how nonsensical this whole thing ends up being. But it is, in fact, the, the state you live in, and don't, most people aren't aware of it. And so they, we tend to do all the wrong things or don't do anything at all. But the case is significant, this uh, Taylor versus Rayojas, Significant because it is a rare instance in which the high court rejected a claim of qualified immunity and made clear that no case on point is required to order in order to hold a government officer liable. And this is very important. Whether how far this goes, I don't know. But like you said, this is a rare case where the Supreme Court finally came back and said, "Well, there, there isn't immunity. A case on point. When I talk about making your cases on point." It reflected in find the first defect. The first defect is what you hit on. And I'm talking a fatal defect, not just anything you think is. And we identified that in COVID, this, this SARS-CoV-2, with the fact that they declared an emergency without finding and determining by the law, the communicable disease law, the first report was never issued, and therefore there could not be a determination. At that point, I don't have to be a scientist to understand all that, even though, as you heard behind what said, we've done quite a bit of analysis to figure it out, to find out you got to know that battlefield so you go learn more. But where they haven't made the first, they haven't received the first report, and then they didn't do the four or five steps after to determine the infectious agent, that agency has no jurisdiction. And the very first thing we want to challenge is that jurisdiction. Do they have power and authority to decide or make a decision or have a delegated uh, discretion? Without the delegated discretion, there is no power. No power, they have nothing. They're, in, they're interlopers. They're trespassers themselves. So there is no qualified immunity on a case on point. The question will be, what's the case on point? But neither here nor there. This is a very important uh, story. Uh, we wanted Again, this is the stuff I was going to talk about weeks ago, uh, so you may have heard it. But the point is, I'm pointing out to you, if you go read these things and you see what's going on, if you've read enough law, you'd realize this shouldn't even be a case before the Supreme Court. That it has to be is what I will focus your mind on here, that this had to be a case and decided this way is one of our problems. And when you read what the case is about, what it took, how violated this guy in Trent Taylor was, a prisoner in Texas, how violated he was before it could rise to the level to get to the Supreme Court and the time it took to do that. You're, you, you need to see that. Because anything lesser has never been able to rise to the top here, showing you how abusive the justice system, and the, including the jails, is. And why it focuses, in my mind, on why Julian Assange could not be brought here because he, of his mental capacity to keep up with this type of an abuse. And why other cases have not allowed, from U- the UK, been extradition happened to the United States prison system because it's inhumane. So I want you to focus on, if you will, well, look for the whole thing, but look at how how vile he was treated before it could get to the Supreme Court. And that we as a society will eventually hope and hopefully 
get to a point when this is not tolerated at all in the least. And so I don't know, those of, you know, lots of us just to kind of avoid the prison thing. We don't want to get involved. You don't want to make yourself a target. I understand all that. But these are just more of the items that are out, out here for us that are waiting for us, that are waiting in the wings to catch you up on the first lie that an officer underneath the color of a peace officer which is just a police, a policing, a policy officer, uh, is is implementing against you. In a, in a system, as I told you, my friend just recently, the, the guy that I had started to learn how to address the courts and what to start to do to offset what they, the corruption they were doing, my very first case of which got the, got the cop in a lot of trouble, got the DA in a lot of trouble. And I, over, even though I had to take nine months to do it, I learned enough uh, to start really the cat and mouse, and I wasn't the mouse. And then they got in trouble for what they did. And so it takes a little bit of energy. It takes a lot of energy. Then I had to be willing to go down there for eight months, nine months, to keep that cop on his swing shift in the courtroom at 8 o'clock in the morning. He just got off work. I kept him there for two. He had to go back to work. And so this is a war beyond uh, anything I've ever had to deal with under the color of civility, if you will. And so it's not. The t- Rojas has uh, this uh, Taylor Rojas The case has shocking, very disturbing facts. Trent Taylor is a prisoner in Texas. He entered a psychiatric prison unit to receive mental health treatment following a suicide attempt. For a period of six days, he was confined in a pair of what the court recently described, the court describes as shockingly unsanitary cells. The court explained that the first cell was covered nearly floor to ceiling in massive amounts of feces all over the floor, the ceiling, the walls, the windows, and even packed inside the water faucet. For four days, Taylor did not eat or drink for fear of contamination. Taylor was then moved to a very cold cell with only a clogged drain in the floor to dispose of bodily wastes. The court said, quote, Taylor held his bladder for over 24 hours, but he eventually and involuntarily relieved himself, causing the drain to overflow and raw sewage to spill over the floor. Because the cell lacked a bunk and because Taylor was confined without clothing, he was left to sleep naked in sewage. Taylor sued to the corrections officer, alleging that they violated the Eighth Amendment by inflicting a cruel and unusual punishment. The district court ruled in favor of the defendants based on qualified immunity, holding that they could not be held liable because they did not violate clearly established law that every reasonable officer should know. Now, I need to interject. I don't know where the psyche came that said that that standard could be applied to Everything I was told would be vile in the world and you just don't allow it to happen that's been extended to cops in prison or anywhere else, actually. They could shoot you dead in the streets. I guess this, this one was just so vile, not even the justices could stomach it, is our problem. But where it came to the point when this kind of activity could even be somebody look in the room and see that at all and allow it is where the state of our government is. We're going on here by this gentleman's re- I think it's called Cheminsky's, uh, he's a gentleman that's writing it, I think. The United States Court of Appeals of Fifth Circuit affirmed the dismissal of Taylor's case. The Court of Appeals ruled that Taylor's constitutional rights were violated. Uh, being uh, placed in the cells was cruel and, un- and unusual punishment, the violation of the Constitution. But, there's an exception apparently, it also concluded that the officers were protected by qualified immunity. It said that the officers could not be held liable because the law wasn't clearly established that prisoners could be housed in cells teeming with human waste for only six days. I don't even know what to say here. I don't have a more word. I'm just going to keep reading, but I hope your mind is just blown right there. And this is the type of mentality. This is the animals that are looking in and taking, supposed to be taking care of you, not treating a jail as punishment, but for punishment. You're just supposed to take a time out. When they start doing this and they didn't stop it, I told you a long time ago, this this has no bottom line. This has no bottom floor to how bad it can be until somebody can stop it. So your complaints won't matter. It's how your complaints, where your complaints start to matter that it becomes important. This case was one of them. It's a, the high court's decision heading into decision seven to one. One justice didn't think this is bad enough. The only, with only Clarence Thomas dissenting, 
Oh, man. Uh, and Justice Amy Cohen, Coney, Coney Barrett not participating. The court reversed the five circuits court procurum opinion. The court held that the officers were not protected by a qualified immunity because, quote, no reasonable correction officer could have concluded that under the extreme circumstances of the case, it was constitutionally permissible to house Taylor in such a deplorable the deplorably unsanitary conditions for such an extended period of time. The court said, quote, confronted with the particularly egregious facts of this case, any reasonable officer would have realized that that uh, Taylor's condition of confinement offended the Constitution. Thomas did not write a dissenting opinion. It simply says Justice Thomas dissents. And then he goes on to write why it matters. I won't read the rest. But this is the point about, the, for me, how... It was because of the extreme nature. Well, how much, what is it, if there's not feces on the walls, then, then that's not enough? Or is it the fact of the plugged drain, that's not enough? It wasn't had nothing to do with him, them stripping him down and putting him naked on a concrete floor? That wasn't enough? See, none of that actually came to bear. It just happens to be how bad all of it was that no one stopped it. And this, so we have a, a rare case, but I want you to understand what this government is, allows to happen to you, and that these are the things that need to be worked on even more. So I don't know what to say. I don't have a, really an answer for that. But if you think you can just be indignant, be belligerent, claim it, and not really know what you're doing, and you think you're going to stop this, you can stop. You can stop thinking that right now. If you just complain that the government's no good, you, you can stop. These people can collect you up and cause you to do this. When I told you a long time ago, and I somehow escaped it, I guess my paperwork was a little bit cleaner. I didn't get put into mental holds the few times that I got picked up. And so the, I knew something different, and I applied it different, and I didn't get put in mental holds. I said that was the technique. They put you in these mental holds, and this is what happens to you. I told you last week, even when they don't put in mental holds, my friend was treated just recent here, just a couple weeks ago, maybe a month now, to the cold treatment. And that's not unusual here. That's what they do. They strip you of everything, and then they put you in a room with an air conditioner, a freezer on. And this is the state of your of your prison system. And the, and the Bar Association agrees with this, because they're the ones that make the rules ultimately, aren't they? Even though I'm reading from an ABA Journal author. This is a rare instance. Like, oh, this is finally, we got, uh, we got a little bit of justice here. But they're the ones, the Bar members are the ones that created this system as well. And your silence to allow it, as I've been talking about. So I have a link here to that case. You can read it. It truly is appalling. I just want you to know, read for how appalling it is but and how appalling it needed to be before justice would step in, so-called justice would step in. And so I guess the other thing is a corollary. If you think that just going out and saying, I have rights, is good enough, your rights are not presumed. And so I, looking at that, and I just tie it back into what I've done, and I don't know how much this would have helped him at all. Again, having people around him that could have kept in on him might have helped make a big pressure. We all have to protect each other at this point. But who cares about a prisoner, right? Who cares about that? He's just a prisoner. Well, this is you and your home, whether you know this or not, with COVID. They're just treating you a little bit better. And so, uh, to me, it's not a difference. It's just a matter of degree. The violence is to you is a matter of degree. And you've accepted that degree. And so, this case will show you... But you you don't matter. Anything underneath this kind of an abuse, your matter, your your situation doesn't matter. So my view is you don't want to get into this thing, and you don't want to get into it unprotected. And I'm finding over time, making a record is a lot better than remaining silent and just declaring a right or not, whatever. The Supreme Court rolls back another horrible qualified immunity decision I got from Tech Dirt. If you want to read a little bit more quickly through the story, I just put that uh, in there just so you have another reference. I don't know what your uh, what your interest is, but uh, you need. I think everybody needs to read how atrocious things are, how bad it has to get before you can get become to get justice. In fact, we can see it relating. That's called, to me. It's not, not much different. Again, it's slight degree. You can't tell me people, the government, allowing COVID to be something, a fraud, that they call it an emergency, that destroys states and economies and kills people, and puts them into their own. Uh, unsanitary conditions and their unsavory conditions and in their unlivable conditions and people the society tolerates it to me is no different so you're watching the prison mistreatment 
move into the government of your system. And I don't see many people really speaking out. And so my response to that is to tell you, get for those of you that will, write your first letter, find that there's no, whether there's a report in your state for the very first case that was moved to determination, your five points in every statute for the communicable disease process, and, and at least get that letter started so that you can address the nonsense, is insanity, that's coming from that. A Supreme Court declines to take up a Trump uh, Pennsylvania election case based on more fraud going through, as I told you, in like 28, 2008, the, the financial destruction of this nation being able now to make money on toxic fraud, on fraud, toxic debt. I told you it was like the writing on the wall. There's nothing, no fraud that's going to be really addressable at this point until some, as a society, we actually come to terms with that. Uh, but Supreme Court declined to take up the Trump Penn, Pennsylvania case. All on fraud is all the connection here for this story. Not really that too much more interested. But, the, but you can go ahead and read through here that even people that are looking in that expect, it's even affecting people that had a view that the government would be would be protective, which I think is a good thing. But it's not helpful in one regard uh, b- because you start to see the, the cracks in the porcelain, if you will, which is a good thing, but it's not good in the systemic function. And that's what we're up against. The U.S. Supreme Court uh, Court's baffling refusal on Monday to grant the review of the Pennsylvania election cases that has been appealed to the justices. The majority of the court, to quote Justice Clarence Thompson, Thomas in dissent, leaving election law hidden beneath a shroud of doubt and inviting further confusion and erosion of the public confidence in our elections. That's one point. And I've been saying, I don't know how anybody since me, 1993, I figured out that these machines can be messed up. These things are loaded and the the game is rigged. Uh, that just broke it for me uh, completely since then. And I don't see how anybody can move on from now, but you notice how they're, they're patching this up. This is on him believing that there's going to be an erosion of public confidence. That's the key. Again, consent of the governed. The people need to rise up and just end this whole thing about those elections. But here's more importantly, what he got onto was that the, what was stated in the, in the case was that uh, I think it was Gorsuch. Let me see if I can find Gorsuch. Such? Gorsuch. Uh, last year, the Constitution provides the state legislatures, not federal judges, not state judges, not state governors, not other state officials bearing primary responsibility for setting election rules. And the Constitution provides a second layer of protection, too. If state rules need revision, Congress is free to alter them. And then they go on to say that these officials have to be in inside that law. They can't be allowed to go outside of the conscripts of statute or constitution. That this, by not looking at this, is allowing them to do so. I looked at that and said, that's COVID. Well, you have every jurisdiction in the world that's never had a first report and has not fulfilled their own communicable disease laws. Globally, having officials working outside of the constraints of statute and also their constitution, and also committing atrocities, irreparable harm. Harm will never get out, never get back, especially from the people that are dead from it. I didn't see this decision any different. The court would not take up that case, would be like the court will not take and has not taken up any COVID case based in fraud. Confirming again, we're living in a government of fraud. And we may at this point, because I don't—I think it's mainly because there's not enough outcry and enough proper action. We may be looking at this as the rule for the future. This, I'm hoping, didn't telegraph to Supreme Courts of the states that we can make any decision we want because they're not going to... It doesn't matter if the local officials live working outside the law. The Supreme Court's not going to pick it up. And so in, in addition to understanding this case, that the case didn't keep up, we think it's Trump, we think it's elections, very serious principles and precedents are being set. And the, I wouldn't probably never see this if I hadn't been involved with a few of you all that are trying to advance your, your protections and securities and make pushing back and having to work through all those things that are going on. I probably would never have seen this. Now, I'm going to tell you, this is very serious. This is beyond Trump and beyond the election. This is about the Supreme Court admitting they would not take up a primary a function of this, of your government that they would not limit local officials from violating their own codes 
and uh, it, it portends a very bad thing coming into the future. And so for me, again, this is not no, this is notice to us. This is not just the news. This is not just something to talk about. This is a, a direction of what's gone on. The stinking abyss is opening up and swallowing up everything. And to my mind, it's it's somewhat solvable. I say somewhat because if no no one's going to respond, then the, it, the other thing wins. That thing, that parasitic amoeba wins. And I'm not sure how much we can do to be self-reliant. Whatever the redneck dentist wants to tell us on Saturday, be self-reliant. Learn how to do, provide for yourself. As what Gigi's Boo and Gary L used to do the pro, and the prepper programs. I'm just wondering how far that's going to go to protect us. You need to do it, but it's if we're not going to protect ourselves from this invasion that's going on now, it's inside our state. I'm really having some trouble understanding what the well. It, I know it's the end game, but I under, I'm trying to figure out what the real point about what is going on is for all the people I hear talking and complaining or not liking it or just resp- waiting to respond to it. There is some precedent sitting there that we can rely on that shows that there's something in the system that doesn't like excesses. We see what those excesses are. It's up to us to tune those back. It isn't going to do it on itself. Like I'd say in the Twitter every once in a while I was saying before, bad don't fix itself. Bad don't fix itself. And this is why there's you know, this implied duty on people to stop crime when they see it. Because if you don't, it, it, it doesn't it doesn't tone down. Moving on, the following lawsuit, CDC removes claims vaccine do not cause autism from its website. More fraud, more watching. If you watch long enough, you see them, cha- you see them things adjusting as pressures put here and there. Uh, uh, the silence is important, and I apparently this is a Dale Bigtree, the, the founder of ICAN, I-C-A-N, not, not necessarily the internet uh, registry, uh, but uh, he, they uh, are taking note of a silence that developed in the CDC's claim for vaccines do not cause autism. And I, as I told you in the the vaccines for the fraud vid-19, that, that says in there it's going to do that. It says it's going to be autoimmune. It says it's going after your nervous system. It says those were all the serious side effects they were expecting as they went in. So this is another showing he shows you, in this case, the silence of them pulling back that they don't cause autism brings up. It certainly doesn't prove they do, but they're not now promoting that they don't. And I say go to that product data sheet, and it'll tell you that it does. It does have the potential. Why? For the potential? Because each one of us is different. Each one of us has a different immune system, and we respond to that differently. Although these new mRNAs, May alter that. We may alter that because I'm not so sure yet. Is looking into this, how a hybrid DNA transcribed foreign synthetic thing injected in a cell that's told to go go forth and multiply in your body that is targeting certain aspects of you is something that your natural system can fight. And so this, it's better. I'll just take, I'll just take a lead on the sustainable development. I'll, I'll take, I'll embrace this the precautionary principle here, because your life may depend on it. That no, I'm not going to get any of this until you can. Well, I may never ever get. I don't need it actually. Because what am I thinking? What am I thinking? COVID's nothing. It's been synthesized. If it's, if it's anything, it's a synthesized private property of a, of a company making a cancer treatments. It's not real. In fact, I told I told people at the JMD uh, this is not this is not even existent. And so, if it's not existent, none of this stuff is worth taking. It has nothing to do with anything, except whatever the plan is for you. And if this is only to be symptoms, and this is all that they claim it does, and that's the best it can do is give you the symptoms. In other words, gives you. I told you the jab, the injection is going to be the pandemic. The way this thing ends up working in ways that we people have never seen before. That you, there's nothing good of this. I can go to NyQuil if symptoms is all I want to get reduced. Anyway, so according to Big Tree, the statement was taken down on the CDC website on August 27, 2020, and added back again shortly after ICANN issued a press release. The Big Tree claims that the statement is inaccurate, no studies have conducted. So this is the same ongoing problem where we see vaccines if you look at the product data sheet you don't have to be it's not that big a fight they'll tell you that this is the problem they'll tell you this is the potential 
I've said, bring your product data sheet. Demand it for any of any of this, any of these things, any of this harma, pharma harma stuff. And I would hope that you, you know, I'm probably singing to the choir here. I hope you you try to avoid that by just living a lot healthier life, figuring out what that is, and doing what you can to to do that and avoid it. And uh, anyway, moving on uh, here, they got moving or whether it's these vaccines or not, they remove it, they put it back. The, the studies aren't there. We prove, I mean, behind which I did, I think, again, I think I'm the first one to create the hashtag, there is no test relative to how they would even find and determine what this thing called, they put a label as COVID, a bunch of symptoms were, which symptoms were actually just the symptoms of AIDS in large part, which I also told you in 1984, Fauci figuratively fall prey to was a was a part of all since 1984. That's all they've been involved in. And we see it repeated that uh, the fraud and continuing on all these aspects, whether it's elections, whether it's these vaccines, whether it's the COVID itself, whether it's the function of your government, whether it's justice, whether it's uh, how far is, what is unjust punishment? <laughs> how high that bar really is being set and no one says anything? How do we go through and keep watching? We just keep don't blink for a long time and the truth starts to come out. The truth they want to tell us, but the truth nonetheless that we can see where we apply it. Russia expert in the WHO mission says one can hardly imagine a leak from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. I don't even want to read a lot of this stuff. As I tell you, just read from this to- the topic. I've read the article. I- I could, we could talk about it, but why? The point is that the independent uh, research and again, they're all in bed with this, but they're saying they could hardly imagine the Wuhan Institute being the source of this bat virus. And here we go back again. It was only a suggestion. Here we go again. It was picked up by the military. It was picked up by the United States and blown out a lot of proportion. Never be on a story. And then it's maybe the only thing that can exist is synthetic anyway. And so an independent Russian expert for the WHO, not the rock group or the OWL, but the World Health Organization mission, looking at the Wuhan says, we can't even understand how this thing would have leaked from here. To me, that was like, because it didn't. It didn't leak from there at all. We keep on looking. We keep on making a story about it. And this is specific to the SARS-CoV-2, which still has no isolate, still has no test. Uh, moving on through this WHO, not the rock group or the OWL, but the World Health Organization, Secretary General confirms all hypotheses remain open about the origin of COVID-19. This is old news. I'm bringing it up. I finally pulled it all up just to talk about it because it's the continuing fraud showing us these people who are giving advice to your local officials, notwithstanding the fact they don't have the first medical report that's required by the law in order to start their investigation to come to determination. They still don't know where this goes, this started, and that prior report helped to bring this on. All hypotheses remain open, which means they don't even know that it exists. We're not even, we're just at the hypothesis stage. And this just confirms the fact of its non-existence. Because the burden is not on us to prove it exists. We can't prove a negative. It's on them. And they don't even know where this thing would have started. If they don't know where it started, how do you know that it even exists? I don't have to be a medical expert, a, 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 a virologist, to understand this. And yet, well, I see a world a world has been locked down. It continues to be so for all, whatever scant little bits of moving around you get to do. It's kind of, what is this, a release that you get to work release? You get to go out of your prison? Yeah, that's what this is all about. You're still under it. And not hardly any of you that I know of have written your first letter to show yourself and officially there has never been the first report. And then you just apply the law that says, well, if I don't have the first report, you couldn't get to the last step to determine a communicable disease. And, and certainly then I could not have that. And certainly I cannot be the threat. I cannot be a direct threat where officially I have a letter that says I'm my name's not on a report. And I told you that was ultimately once you learn the minefield and you know what the business owner, the third-party business owner is looking for, you can hop and skip and jump over the top of that minefield, that legalistic minefield. It doesn't exist for you because the state hasn't done its first thing. And I told you about the accuracy and the strategic and 
the laser hit that this would be way back in March of 2020. It has not changed. Now, the ramifications of all this fraud, uh, the who knows, oh, we don't even know where that, we still know, all hypotheses are, 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 are open of the origins. They have no, they have, no, there's nothing. I'll just say there's nothing. But upon this nothing, and we've had make connections to that little pipsqueak over in the Middle East called Israel, handed and accepting their technology, we see what, what these people are willing to do, as I talked last week. We have a nuance coming about what they do with all this information of the public registries, which should speak a little bit to those of you that are so-called understand how you have to be separate. The jurisdictional attachments I started talking about early, earlier in the broadcast. Israel adopts law allowing names of unvaccinated to be shared. Israel's parliament passed a law Wednesday allowing governments to share identities of people not vaccinated against the coronavirus. Remember, it's not COVID-19 no more. It's just the common cold. And what's the vaccination? It's not a vaccine. It's it's marginally might consider a treatment, but that's only to give you the disease the symptoms, right? The symptoms are disease. So there's no vaccine. It's not on the common cold. That's not what started this. Yet they've transitioned this thing over to the common cold, something we understand there's no, no uh, uh, cure for because of the mutation. Then they complain about the, the mutation. And they say that's the cause. It's the endless, the endless diseases that they said was coming, and they would create, either whether by synthetic uh, manipulation in, the re, in a research lab, if they can do that, or just by telling you a fairy tale you believe, and you jump underneath, you jump in the closet because you're afraid, and you're scared, a, a scared, a scared, and a, a scared of the uh, boogeyman, a boogie virus under the bed. But Israel passed a, a law Wednesday allowing the government to share identities of people not vaccinated against the coronavirus with all authorities, raising privacy concern for those opting out of inoculation. You think? Now, their claim is they just want to be able to re- find out who you are and talk to you privately. Yeah, well, that's uh, that just shows me it's not a privacy concern. It's a privacy threat. They're doing it to intimidate you, which is terrorism. And this country is willing to do that with their people and apparently they have a public registry to keep track of you if you don't think your little phone isn't one of these things that the israeli technology is being used to track and trace you on we've talked about this over and over and over this is a pivotal spot for some reason in the world relative to governance technolo- technocracy controls relative to the covid global reach and what is promoted and told to us if we look in the news that may happen in a, in a locale near you to harass you more. Why I keep telling you, get your first letter. Get your letter that there's no first report. Get your letter, maybe a secondary letter that says that your name is not on any report. And so what? then you convert what they think their right will be, their excuse to be able to start to do this becomes that felony, those felonies I keep telling you about, using a color of authority under a color of another, using author, their, their official authority under color of an authority to diminish you and your rights or property that pertinent those rights. That's extortion. That's the property infringed. The rights, whether they're pertinent or just rights generally, that's uh, the rights infringed are coercion, and both of them taken at one time is conversion. And so when you understand what they're doing and you look at what's happening and you can then create your record that exposes that for you, then you now have that official sitting in a fairly bad way on the record, whether or not the criminals will allow it. And I think that's just a matter of everyone noticing. And and so it, the problem I notice is lots of people want to stay quiet. Lots of people really have a conservative view, not not political, but they're just more conservative. What they don't do is they don't step up and, ins- and insist on that. Even in, in, and I've seen it many times in people that I know myself. You get real active about not, you know, addressing someone in the street, but you won't actually take the step back and say, "Wait a minute, that started from somewhere else, and I need to go address the cause of this for me somehow." And I've been offering you that with that letter to start that. So Israel adopts a law allowing names to be unvaccinated to be shared. That's just a, a recipe for uh, harassment, intimidation, dread, terrorism on those that won't comply for something that's a fraud. And so this is our nude, no, nude, our notice out forward that uh, this is the types of things that are building to bring this on 
uh, as it goes on and on. It, it, we're talking COVID a bit here. It's going to be any other thing that's not consistent with the whatever the political technocratic bent is for the future that they want. Then we're moving on here about these mitigation levels. We have that's done on a fraud in Israel. When the last week's was done, all on a fraud. All this is done on a fraud. Where the who is now saying we don't have a clue where the origins are, which means it doesn't exist at all. Which means we I've told you you're in a very special place in history. Way back in March of last year. Move on this thing. Move now. If you ever had a question, you can remove the question of of the truth of this, and you will have nobody that can come against this if when you do it right like I've been saying. It's all the way to today. Not withstanding the who saying we don't know what the origins are, the Russia goes in and so we don't understand how this could come out of this lab. All indicating it didn't do any of that. It's all a big fairy tale. It, it's worse than that, but uh, it's really just a fraud. It's not a hoax, folks. Everyone says it's a hoax. It's not a hoax. It's a fraud. A Dr. Anthony Fraudshi. No data showing double masking works. This is how old these stories are. Everyone's past this double masking. What they don't understand is the dynamic of this of these author, so-called authorities telling you this still exists in the world. It still is an imposition, and people are still listening to it. The very people that you we were talking about last week are now now in the state businesses trying to get you to fight with your or fight, to get them to fight and support protect the society against this fiction, this fraud. But Dr. Fauci says no data showing double masking works. Well, double masking says there's no data, but you didn't hear that come out of the officials. In other words, you hear them promote the fraud. And the only way I know to to out it is to identify it, the fraud, and call it there what it is, not a hoax, a fraud, and show show that how that works. And how you cut that out, how you get rid of that is applicable to use. Find out the authority the statutory authority they were supposed to function under and shows that you're not even there. You're not even in this. But I keep telling people that are really into wanting to avoid jurisdictions and they, you know, they get into all this stuff like the, oh, what is it? I don't even think about this stuff. I had to slow up here. The birth certificate and all this stuff. It's never asked, why are you worried about it? If a simple statement can counter it, why are you? what's the worry? If you're not part of the Communicable Disease Authority, why are we arguing with each other? And if you have people that want to argue because they're senseless, then you have, you're have you going to have to have a, an independent, non-dependent proof, an independent proof of their opinion that's dependent on their the authority they believe exists, which is your state authority, which you have a letter saying, well, no, there's no first report. Not here in this county. Now that, that does something else with the foundation of the other side's argument, because they didn't know that. And so now you, you put yourself in a better way to educate but still get your, get your point, because you've had it, your traveling papers happens to be the state authority. For everyone says you, you, you can't trust the state, you can use it to show you that they don't have authority. And if, if you do it the way I'm saying, you'll do that. But they don't have authority. They don't have authority because they don't have a first report in that county. So you have a better position. But mass, they wanted to go double mass. Anthony, Anthony Fauci came up and revised his recommendation that Americans wear two masks to further protect themselves from the coronavirus. Fauci spoke at a double masking uh, in a video, but he said there's nothing with that, he says in that, that, that but there's nothing wrong with that, but there's no data that indicates that that is going to, to make a difference. It's consistent to every other thing that they have no data on. And they have no evidence of that first report either, which is the starting of all this. And so you have, again, it's all the same method they're using. Just for the surface of this, he admits that there's just no evidence for it. And yet they'll promote it. Shows you're dealing with a criminal who wants to hurt you. And so you, it's bet more that you have to protect yourself. This is, uh, more stories on this came through all at one time a few weeks ago. This, and it, now this moves us and transi transitions us to what I was saying before. They're going to make you a mental case. Remember I entered this, this discussion pretty much at the beginning of the broadcast about how mistreated you were, you were going to be. When you were put in as a someone who's vulnerable and then they stuck you and treated you as, as, as atrociously as they did in a mental hold, 
what they did when you felt when you were showing yourself vulnerable they had no sympathy for that they're going to show you how they put you and i told you this was coming in how they're going to try and work all the angles to get you into a mental incapacity and do that to you and what that court case before says okay well now like i said they'll just decide well they just won't have the feces go up the wall now and we'll we'll test that someone else more people will be well we just didn't have it that bad no one will ever say we shouldn't have it bad at all because the system is not about empathy it's not about what we've been told and i'm asking people to avoid that at all costs and become functional in the process of becoming functional hopefully we eliminate that for people who just have no capacity at all certainly for ourselves we limit it disposable uh, surgical masks best for ma- being uh, masks best for being heard clearly when speaking study find disposable surgical masks best for being heard this is a whole week for the justification for masks even though Fauci said there's no data for any of its utility relating to this we already know that there's no there's also studies that do not uh, do say that they are not effective against the virus any virus because they're not again the it's like trying to stop a killer beehive attack with a chain link fence relative to its sizing and yet they keep promoting it. But now we want to say, oh, the disposable masks, surgical masks are best to hear and clearly speaking, for to have people hear better. Why do they even go there? Because you can't understand. You can't hear. I have a problem. I didn't realize I had such a problem. But I really I have a problem understanding people through masks. Yeah, I can make stuff out. My mind works pretty good at making stuff up about what they said. But it's not, it's not a a very clear communication so they come out to tell you oh use surgical masks because these are these surgical masks are the clearest well if you go look at the at the di- uh, register re- uh, regulations around all that they're not for you surgical masks you're not a surgeon but they're actually going after uh, this story says researcher ryan corey recently heard from a friend who teaches at school where some of the te- students have hearing loss the friend wanted to know if he had any ideas to help her communicate with these students while wearing masks to slow the spread of COVID-19. Fauci says there's no evidence, but this guy wants to make a false study. And this is a setup study in order to get the proof that, oh, we can wear the mask, just use this one, and you'll be able to communicate the best. Not clearly, but the best. Corey also has a hearing loss, did not know that uh, to, to tell her, what to tell her so he, he headed to the illinois augmented listening laboratory to look for solutions goes through a, sto- a long old story about how he has found out how all this works how to how we use the tunable speaker and all this let me tell you something folks speakers are not your lips they're not your oral si- your auditory system in hearing or transmitting and yet they use technology to try and replicate something that they can't where a mask is actually interfering with everything that the lips does in order to allow for a clear articulation or the escape of air and certain types of air for certain sounds. And so we see technocrats trying to bring a study in science which actually cannot replicate what we do as people. It's kind of like no different than one of these AI bots. You're going to have, oh, from far away maybe it looks like something, but you get up close, it's kind of creepy. It's not going to give the correct replication. They, but So this is the thing they were coming on to. They're trying to convince you that you can get a certain mask if you have a problem. And what did I tell you before? We ran across that problem, and we actually used it as a ADA complaint against a judge, requiring the wearing of a mask where you have proper communication. And then the judge caused a due process problem, which we called out in an objection. And so, you, you, again, you have to be there. I would have never thought this would have come up. But we were able to use this very problem that this researcher, so-called, says that a mask gives you the best clarity. It doesn't mean it's adequate either. It just says it's best if you have to wear a mask. All for what? Stopping the spread? For what? There's no evidence for stopping the spread. The whole thing is based on one domino fraud on the other. That's why you start with the first fraud. It doesn't ever get any better. And then it gets better. It gets even better what they did with masks. U.S. Davis study finds masks don't impact ability to communicate. I've, I know for a fact that it, ability, it interferes with my, my ability. I know now for a fact we have publica- published 
a objection in a court of law that said that it does impact the ability to communicate. And yet we have people coming out, UC Davis, embarrassingly, saying a study finds that masks don't impact the ability to communicate. This story is the one I think it is. And there's another study reverses, uh, reveals the surgical masks have the best acoustic effect on speech. The best acoustic effect sounds like they're actually amplifying and, and manipulating your speech. That was tied to the other one. But getting back to this one, USC Davis, this is the one that says it doesn't impact the ability to communicate. And if you think so, you've got a mental problem. And that, when I saw this one, that, that's when I collected up all these masks. Utility, these utility studies for the utility of the masks that they are going to want you to make you wear. And that when it came down to this one, I realized that's what they're after. They're making all the reasons why you should be able to wear a mask, even though it's all a lie built on a fraud. And if you complain, you will be a mental case. And then you get to get thrown in the hold, in the hole, just like Taylor did in Texas. And they don't care about you because you're a mental case. It's why I've been telling you, don't go down the track that most people will. I have rights. No, you have to have now, your traveling papers is really your sanity papers. Because it's coming down to the point, there's no excuse to not wear a mask. And if you make an excuse that you can't communicate exactly what before this study came out, we already had an objection to an order that ignored an ADA accommodation request by a judge, of all things, clearly violating federal law. That right after that, this study, not because they're connected, but that's why I took notice, it says that they don't impact the ability to communicate so that they can take and make you a mental case when you claim that it does. And you can eliminate a lot of this by saying, but I'm not the person that is a direct threat. And here's my letter from the health authority in my county. Okay, so this is, I'm trying to anticipate for you how to get rid of all this nonsense. You learn about the nonsense so you can avoid the nonsense. Otherwise, they turn you into something because they have the authority, they have the power, they've been given the power as third parties to control the threat, direct threat to society over you and you don't have a better word in your mouth, you will be deemed a mental case. Just like I told you. I don't know how many, what was it, maybe in May I started mentioning. Be careful, folks. Don't get too wild. Don't get too into arguing with people. Here, Here's the study that starts to focus that. So enough said, I guess I'll keep moving. I just, I'll just start harping on this. This is so important. The methodology that they're inflicting on people is so important to understand. I just start to want to repeat it. And I know maybe that's not such a good thing. You guys get it the first time, but maybe the choir gets it too soon. And the rest of society doesn't. And so I'm asking the choir to go get your first letter so you can start being the example of how there is no, you are not part of the problem. And you have a letter that says so. And until we get out of this burden, we will have to have our papers. It's one of many types of papers that they've agreed to anyway, so I don't understand what part of that is. Uh, now, the, okay, based on all these frauds, based on the setup, based on making you a mental case, because you just don't want to wear a mask, and how much, how best they can be to to in, to for speech. Didn't say it improved it at all, but in fact, it doesn't. Not to my ear. The same problem we were probably having at the on the audio this uh, this uh, earlier, and I hope it's better. <laughs> I don't know uh, where someone was here it can't hear high tones and i'd put too much treble on and so they they their hearing got it went away they can't hear those frequencies it's the same type of thing in articulating your words when you speak and the cover that goes over but uh, i want to move on to more information i want to show you how knowledge may not necessarily mean anything and uh, not to disparage the the gentleman but uh and i can't remember someone sent me this link uh, to tom munn's idaho political talk and activism uh, TomMunn.com, a ton, a ton of knowledge, of information. I guess I can't say knowledge. I, I didn't go through it all. But the topics were pretty close to what I've been covering on the Behind the Woodshed. If you wanted all these things in one spot, I'm going to give you a link to go to there. What I wanted to point out on this, though, uh, he said, what was it? the thing caught my eye real quickly? His freedom is the cure. Bill of Rights doesn't have an emergency loophole. Well, good, good slogan. Good slogan and all. American flag on the left, little bird, uh, characterized bird, uh, eagle, red, red wings, blue head. 
Uh, freedom is a cure. Bill Wright doesn't have an emergency loophole. It, it doesn't matter, folks. Of course it's not, but it doesn't matter if you're not going to step up. And all of all this knowledge, I realized I didn't see anything that said that in or Idaho, this guy with all this information has stepped forward to stop the same prison system uh, ex extension to you uh, in every state. So knowledge is not the power. What are you going to do with it? What's the? How do you take out the emergency that doesn't have an emergency loophole? The Bill of Rights is still functioning, is it? I don't, I don't even know if, if that's even an accurate statement where no one has stepped up to prove that. That we all should have. So, oh, I said should. Well, I'm not supposed to do that. Yeah, well, you live your, live your prison and deny it. I don't know what else to say about it. I put a lot of time and energy in helping people to try and go where they want to protect themselves. And we're all learning a whole lot more. I'm learning a whole lot more, uh, not just that the system's corrupt, but how. And the understanding about the how is like last week. You understand about the landmine, you can circumvent it. Eventually, you'll find the way. And if it's not by yourself, it'll be in the general acknowledgement as to the way. And if it's not even that, then even within the mitigation, as we we're showing what the uh, J, John Jay with his uh, methodology, just like I was telling you, do your uh, what what Peggy Hall says is an incident report. I said become the investigative reporter. Then you file your report. Who, what, where, why, when. You understand the basics of the law. You understand what the limitations were. And you understand that uh, you can state you were not part of that and you were violated because of that. Now you're having a way to make an effect. You become the example for others around you. And so to me, this COVID is a real simple way to get into re-empowering. If I, People hate that word. It is kind of weird. Empower. You're not really powered. What you're doing is the power is, the, is in telling that someone else they don't have it, who is a supposed to have it. And so here we have a freedom is the cure. Great slogan. Great. The Bill of Rights doesn't have an emergency loophole. If that's the case, why is everybody locked down coast to coast around the world, the four corners of the world that have a TV? Another report here for you for those that want more and more knowledge and haven't heard about it, want to see it more in one place. Uh, Ten reasons SARS-CoV-2 is an imaginary theoretical virus. I'm only pointing this out because it's not only me that saw it back in March and how to show it. Now, the, the proof is in a list form by people. So these lists can help you. I'm not saying that they're 100%. You, everyone's going to have to study these deeply to find out if they don't understand, they want to understand whether or not they can use it to understand. And I looked through enough. Some of it, most of it was good enough to get you on the path if you haven't found it behind the woodshed and all the links I've provided. All the studies that have been gone on, all the statements on how you show the, that it, the silence of the failure of a statement, statement that proves it. I have more links to show the, what the fraud is, how they did it. And there's no, I guess the point here, there's no excuse to not step up and ask for your letter. Where's the first? What's the first medical report the county received, county health official received? And maybe in a second letter so you don't have to put them both out to give your name. Give me, uh, do you have my name on a report? And once you do that, you have proof you're not a direct threat to the society, don't you? And that's a statement from the official. No, they didn't intend that, but that's how you're going to use it. Future vaccines depend on test subjects in short supply. Monkeys. We get that. Future vaccines depend on test subjects in short supply. Monkeys. Well, that just shows you that your MNRA is not a vaccine because they got plenty of you monkeys that they're taking, taking voluntarily taking this so-called vaccine. Millions of human lives all over the world are at stake. Human animals. No men and women anymore. Nothing. Animals. You monkeys. So, I found this story fascinating. You're not, we're not in short supply. The human monkeys that they're testing on right now, the experimental cancer drugs, MNRA, is not short of any monkeys at all. In fact, they're wanting to kill off a few of you. Hey, moving on. I just... From event 2000, 201, event 201, if you think it's over, and now we're talking now getting into what? The move from real life into that virtual technocracy. A cyber polygon, the WEF simulation of coming cyber pandemic. If you didn't understand, pandemic is now virtual in every aspect. It's synthetic. The whole thing is. And until we get people to see this and actually work from that, you don't walk to someone and say, oh, this is a synthetic. No, you go show that there's no report by the law. 
So you have the basis and the foundation that the official was supposed to work from. You don't get into arguing with people. They don't understand. They won't understand. And they're afraid. They're afeared. They're scared. You're not getting past that. On Wednesday, the World Health, World Economic Forum, along with Russia, Surbank, Spur, Bank, and it's a cybersecurity subsidiary buy zone announced that a new global cyber attack simulation would take place in this coming July to instruct participants in developing secure ecosystems by simulating a supply chain cyber attack similar to the recent solar winds attack and that would quote assess the cyber resilience of the expertise exercises participants well the government of the United States has declared that the, the United States military is all over this cyber space control. So if that's the case, I think they're going to be a co-partner. And uh, didn't they just do something like this as a simulation and a supply chain attack when they address, when they implemented COVID-19? And didn't they just in the beginning of this, in the title, say it was from Event 201 to Cyber Polygon? It is a continuation of how they're figuring out how to lock you down. And if you think you don't have viruses in the in the Internet, watch out. I will go on more. This is all coming from the same sources, the reset, the great reset, all on fraud, and uh, the society sits back and listens to it. I, I don't know what more to say. I don't know why, how. And it doesn't end. These people came onto the scene now. They've turned it up. They got what they wanted. You, you, the government, United States government's involved. The military is involved strictly inside. The 5G is involved. All, all this stuff is turning, they're turning the knob to 11. For those of you that remember analog systems that didn't have an 11. Moving on. Biden vows to end gunmaker immunity. Taking a jab at Sanders was a story one year ago. This year, in February... Biden calls on Congress to enact common-sense gun law reforms. And they're talking about the AR-15 in this picture. That in the first story that Biden is trying to distance himself from Bloomberg, who I got the link from, the Bloomberg News from Bloomberg, who wants to take away your guns. He wants to distance himself. But a year later, he puts that on. I found interesting the very first thing in last year's was taking a jab at Sanders Biden vows to end gunmaker immunity. If the government really wanted you to be protected, they would end the immunity on the makers of vaccines or pseudo-vaccines or those other therapies. They would stop the special court. They would allow you to have access to the courts, if notwithstanding the lack of justice. You would put the fear of an economic repercussion on these companies, which is the most important. Why I told you earlier, Jitsi, the most honest thing Jitsi did to explain to me, they don't want to listen to my stuff, don't want to continue to record my connection, is because it doubles their costs. And it's just, for them, it's just not worth it. Well, money, follow the money. Biden wants to end the gunmaker immunity. I'm not sure how this all works out. A year ago, he says he's taking a jab at Sanders. I'm saying, well, if you, wanted to be in, in, if you want to stop subsidizing harm, stop subsidizing corporations at all. Take away all their immunity. This year, he's moving in earnest now to take away, to condition, and it's all administrative, condition making so-called common sense gun laws. There's nothing common sense that can be applied to the right, antecedent right to bear arms for your defense, and most importantly, against someone like Biden, who's in the government, who would use them, the military, to come after you. We have the right to abolish, alter and abolish the government as the people see fit. And so I don't know how this all plays out, but those of you that think that this is like a done deal, and we don't have some crazy people in control, and that the future is the future they want, not yours, and that they don't care about bringing in some adjunct policy in place of what we thought was our law, and partly because we're not really, we're not stepping up then I think you're missing a point here for all you Second Amendment folks. They're coming in earnest. They've got some of the power now. These are implementing quicker and quicker the things that we've talked about in the global sphere of things. Now, Biden is moving forward, as I said, and he's, he wants to take jabs, wants to separate himself, but ultimately comes out in favor of, of how 
all this is going. I could care less about Biden. I could care less about the Democratic Party. I'm saying there's people in places to dis- in the in government now to destroy you. And they're put, put there by a mediocre minority, actually, of those electors, notwithstanding that it all could have been hacked since the 90s. Since before, after they started bringing on the electronic equipment. The technocrats have been moving since, what, the early, late 20s, early, maybe even 15s to 20s to 30s. They've been around. So we saw, I'm calling on Congress to enact common sense gun law reforms, including requiring background checks on gun sales, banning assault weapons and high capacity magazines, and eliminating immunity for gun manufacturers who knowingly put weapons of war on the streets. Complete conflation of the idea that these are not assault weapons, whatever that might be, but this is what they do, and they have the power to bring this through. And uh, the other thing I think was on here is there was a discussion based on this. The law that they want to bring on here, and I have it out of place, I'm going to kick it up now. They want to make it, they made a comment that this was relative to allowing the armed forces in on this. Now, this spoke directly to me, as you know. I keep telling you, you live in a military consequence, whether you realize that or not. Now, I've pointed out, like the vaccine, this, the Operation Warp Speed, the military bioweapon, all this stuff. The military is using. You would think that they would be protecting you, but you in the states are actually an enemy combatant to those people in Washington D.C. In fact, just a a quick little get together at the at, inside the building of the People's House, so-called, got them all riled up. But I want to go and bring out the law that they're referring to that's going to do this. And if you think it's a joke, and you think that this is not uh, is disconnected, or oh, you're going to have some remaining rights when it gets done, the pressure comes on. Remember. They can enter in your house and steal your stuff. They can put a red flag on you. They can now, apparently, when this goes through, they start to rely more on the federal military. It says it right here in the, in the database section. And I don't have no firearm registration system. In the database section. In general, the attorney general shall establish and maintain a database of all firearms registered pursuant to this section. Now, firearms has a special definition, but no one understands that. Let's go on. B, access. The Attorney General shall make the contents of the database accessible to all members of the public, all federal, state, local law enforcement authorities, all branches of the United States Armed Forces, and all state and local governments as defined by the Bureau. And so we see the military is now involved in the very thing that the Second Amendment was established to stop that military. They now are gaining, the, they're claiming the right to gain intelligence against you wherever you are. And so I'm, my whole focus started to become more on the point of you're living in a military consequence. They just handed the military the database of where all their guns are. For all of you tough guys, they don't come and just come and make a war on you. They do it piecemeal. They've learned that. At any rate, so there's a law. You can go read it. I just read from it. You can read it yourself. As we move into... Well, you think this would be settled. You think that your rights, as we saw how high the bar was for uh, an unreasonable, uh, unjust punishment in a, in a jail, a medical, a medical hold, a, no, a mental hold, no less. The Supreme Court will decide whether a police can enter a home to seize guns without a warrant. So not only are they making a law to get a database, they're now it's a question whether or not the Supreme Court will allow people, cops to come in without a warrant. Well, let me offer something. They've got the database, and they can make up this red flag nonsense. It doesn't really require anybody to. Uh, there's no. There's no real perjury. There's no. There's no problem with getting you in trouble first, and then you got to go fight, and then they don't give you any evidence. You have no evidence to stop what they've done. When they have the database of where the gun is right, they can fabricate the facts, and they can get the warrant. But this almost. This story is almost like a nullity. But the, the Supreme Court has yet to decide whether uh, the police can enter a home to seize guns without a warrant. And what I always find fascinating is these are like oddball cases that make it to the Supreme Court. Not a direct case that shows a violation. No, they've got to get an oddball one in order that the court would find interest in it, I suppose, in order to decide it. It's had to be a, conf- a, a divorce situation or something between a man and a woman in their marriage, and they called the cops, and there was a complaint, and so the cops came in, and decided there was the exigent circumstance to go rifle through because the wife said, there's guns. And they came in, and they took the guy's guns. 
And so the story is not even a direct, can they, do they need a warrant? It has to do with a whole other bunch of facts, which can be created by not them, you invited. It's like you call the cops. This is all the invitation is. The Fourth Amendment right against warrantless searches in a person's home is a pillar of Americans' constitutional liberties, they say. People of a poli- uh, p- before a police officer or any government official can enter your home, they must show and ju- a judge that they have probable cause that they will discover specific evidence of a crime, they say. They didn't have to do it for COVID, did they? They declared an emergency. No one, de- no one challenged them yet, successfully anyway. That there was no emerg- no uh, exigence, there was no demonstrable, demonstrated exigence, no cause for an emergency. And here, the second next paragraph, there are some limited exceptions to this right. There is an exigent circumstance exception. Well, under COVID, uh, de- you, communicable disease declarations, they have to have the exigent circumstance to declare it. It's not an exception. They're treating it as an exception. So we see some of the basic facts here, but they don't apply them to the government. And they are still a question. The fact that they're still a question is my problem with all of this. That some of this even makes the court as a question. Is, it should be take, People should be taking note. There is an exigent circumstance exception. If a police officer looks through a home window, home's window and sees a person about to stab another person, the officer can bust through the door to protect, prevent the attack. There is another emergency aid exception. If the officer looked through the same window and saw the resident collapsing from a parent heart attack, the officer could run into the house to administer aid. Neither of these causes cases violates the Fourth Amendment, if you would argue that it should be otherwise. Well, I'm just wondering, how did the cop get on your private property to not be a trespasser looking in your window? And then this, however, there was a broader cousin, which I've talked about extensively, well, a long time back I was talking about it. There was a broader cousin to this exception called the community caretaking exception. It derives from a case in which the police took a gun out of a trunk of an impounded vehicle without first obtaining a warrant. How that applies to a house, I don't know, but here's how they extend this nonsense. The Supreme Court held that there there is a community caretaking exception to the Fourth Amendment's warrant required because police perform, quote, community caretaking functions totally divorced from the detection, investigation, and acquisition of evidence relating to violating violation of a criminal statute. You look at the list there, what they do under a criminal statute, that shows you what you're, you're checking for, for those of you that do the checks, whether or not this is a detection, investigation, or acquisition of evidence is under the criminal section, but they don't need that. Before the court held that the police activity and the furtherance of the function does not violate the Fourth Amendment as long as it is ex- executed in a reasonable manner. Now, I didn't see too much about that. How does it re- who decides reasonable? When wasn't a trespass when the cops looking in your d- window of your house? How is that reasonable? Yet they look right past this stuff. It never makes it to be d- determined. Now, note that unlike uh, the first two exceptions, this this one is not limited to emer- immediate emergencies. In the Supreme Court case just described, there was only a general concern that the vandals, the cops, the vandals might eventually break into the impounded car and steal a, any weapons that were in the trunk. And so again, this is for their concern. They think they're helping the public. How that respond, relates to your house, I don't know. But this is where the government takes this license Government officials take the license. Also, there is three exceptions allow warrantless searches so long as the police officer acted reasonably. That is one of the easiest constitutional standards to meet and is a significantly lower standard than probable cause, which is required for a warrant. As long as an officer might reasonably think that the warrantless search will alleviate a danger to community, the search is considered, uh, considered constitutional. There is vigorous vigorous debate about whether the community care exception can apply to searches of a person's home as well as their car. Vehicles have always ha- had less Fourth Amendment protection than homes, which are considered a person's most private sphere, notwithstanding the fact that vehicles in this context underneath federal jurisdiction is commercial vehicles. And they weren't supposed to touch your stuff privately in your home with, or around your property and apart in your life that were not commercial. Not regulable. And so there's an inside fraud on this. Anyway, the court has just announced that it will hear the arguments month in the, uh, next month in a case that presents its issue, Cagniglia versus Strom. In this case, uh, Cagniglia uh, was arguing with his wife and melodramatically put a loaded gun on the table and said, shoot me now and get it over with. 
How about if we don't do that, folks? How about if we think a little bit clearer? His wife called it a non-emergency number for the police who arrived shortly thereafter. The police had disagreed about whether uh, Mr. Caniglia was acting normal and agitated, but that they convinced him to take an ambulance to the local hospital for evaluation. The police did not accompany him. I find this interesting. He actually put the gun on the table and said she was to kill him. He wasn't really doing much of anything. He just gave someone the opportunity to, to do some harm. At any rate, I don't know how to analyze that one quite quickly on the broadcast, but we will. Uh, he, while he was in his, on his way to the hospital, Mr. Coniglia told the police that her husband, Mrs. Coniglia told the hu- police that her husband had kept two handguns in the home. The police decided to search his home for the guns without obtaining warrant. Mr. Coniglia's consent to have the, re- have the police search their home was uh, legally negated because the police untruthfully told her that her husband was consented to the seizure of the gun. In parentheses, the police located to seize the, the guns, but Mr. Caliglia sued for the violation of his Fourth Amendment privacy and his Second Amendment rights to keep the guns and the home uh, self-protected, uh, for home self-protection. The first court of appeals, which the federal court just below the Supreme Court is Caniglia's jurisdiction, sided with the police. The court wrote, at its core, the community caretaking dis- doctrine is designed to keep police elbow room, give police elbow room to take appropriate action when unforeseen circumstances present some transient hazard that requires immediate attention. Understanding the core and purpose of the doctrine leads inexorably to the conclusion that it should be limited to a motor vehicle in the motor vehicle context. Threats to individual and community safety are not confined to the highways. And I, and I can't tell you how wrong this community caretaking function is when you hear what the police have done with it in other areas. Uh, again, finally to the Supreme Court and yet to be decided. It is certainly true the police have a need to uh, deal with discretion in carrying the very complex and sometimes dangerous duties, but there is also powerful agents of the government and their power is, these are also powerful agents of the government and supposed to be restrained by the Bill of Rights. So this is the exigent circumstances condition of the emergency aid setting itself apart. The courts to decide this is still going to be something that we should watch out for. I, I don't understand how this is even before the courts, but this is the case. Someone arguing with someone, someone puts a gun on a counter and says, shoot me if you don't like it, so like me so bad. And they declare him to be unstable, but she goes to the hospital. It, it just, I've never seen a court case these court cases that decide a direct question on the limits. They're always tied to these cases. And again, this is the problem with dealing in case law, why I've, I, re, I dislike using it at all in any kind of a context explaining a, an authority. Moving on here, getting back to the government and the military. Is the military, the police, or the, your local police are the military, and they're policy enforcers. They're not law enforcers why this goes on. We've also connected the commercial problem, the adulteration to that in your private life, which I was able to identify through the disposition of soil, the disposal of soil uh, grants that uh, you'll find in every state, uh, at least west of the Mississippi, relative to the right of the government, uh, the state's rights to not have a in- remaining interest in land and your pertinent rights of ingress and egress and all those things. Uh, none of that's ever talked about in all this. But the policy enforcers step in. They're, they're also part of the extended um, administrative districts, and they're all underneath the military as well as the commerce uh, clauses, which is part and parcel to all this adulteration. Nobody ever talks about any of this stuff. And if you try to, they will attempt, well, they do. They they sequester your case pretty quickly. Uh, so you have to figure out other ways to get at it. But back to the connection of the overarching gun control potential coming up, the database going to the government. This story came up. I think got this through Sound Minds, who's over at uh, TrueTube.Live for now. And I'm not quite sure how this works for him, but he's got some stuff he posts from what I do over there. And uh, DOD to, uh, private, uh, to starting private 5G network, as we read a link that he's placed there, uh, network project to support smart warehouse applications. What I found that interesting is the statement set up here. The initiate, initiative of the Marine Corps Logistics Command will enable warehouse robots, barcode scanning, and holographic augmented and virtual reality applications. Uh, the DOD is starting a private 5G network project to support smart warehouse. Smart, not intelligent, but smart warehouses. is a sustainable development in your military. They've adopted this 
foreign rule over you already, warehouse applications. Well, I can't tell you that it's not them scratching each other's back when you get to the WHO and the UN and sustainable development and the military. Going down through and finding this holographic thing, uh, found they making a whole system for this. And it occurred to me if you change the words just a little bit, you might be able to start to understand when you are the property, then maybe the words mean something a little different. In a, in a one paragraph down here, IK, IKIN, a provider for high-resolution 3D visual technology, is deploying holographic capabilities for locating, identifying, and retrieving materials without having to move or open packaging. And I read that, and that, all that to talk to me about was your phone and the capacity of your, all the Internet of Things, which this is tied to, to find you the material thereafter. What if you were the proprietary material of the of the uh, mnRNA pharmaharma injection, uh, and they're going to find the materials for tracking and don't need to look inside your home, which is the package, and they can do it holographically by electronic technology, and the military is involved. If you don't think that why I talk about the uh, HR 127 law before, where they give the military the database, won't be tied to this in 5G. I think you're missing a very important point on how they're undermining the people's ability to alter or abolish their government, which is supposed to be their reserve right, and firearm, um, arms, not firearms, but arms, is not objectionable, that they're going to make it objectionable, that you are going to be, over time, part of this system. And I know I just high-graded one point. You can read it for the context you want. But I, I see exactly for me what I've been telling you in this. I guess I see what I believe, but it says what the technology already can do, tied to what the military was told to us after 9-11, the Internet of Things and Donald Rumsfeld, uh, is being implemented, and they can use all of this against us. It's right here. So whatever, I don't know. It's, I say it's right here. You can believe otherwise. You can ignore it. You can go play games, whatever. This is coming down for probably in the near future, but maybe not for some of us. Maybe a couple. They have to work. They work in about 20-year increments. They work until 2030. Like I said, I think they were looking to 2025, and then they were going to try tweak it down again, and I think they got what they needed by 2021. You're now seeing what was going to be implemented by 2025 today. So in response to all this integration with the databases and the military being involved, and you hear that connection back over to that H.R. 127 for uh, bringing in more common-sense gun regulation. Again, you see between the, the stories that I got to get to here, you see the Supreme Court's looking at making exceptions to the co clear constitutional statements. We have no protection against that at this point. So people are starting to respond. And I have mixed feelings about this. It depends. I didn't have time to read it. Uh, that local localities start making sanctuary cities. I told you Virginia was the best way to go do that, but you didn't need to do the sanctuary city. You needed to alter and abolish your government as the Constitution allowed you in your Article 3 uh, there, and it was all ready to go with 95% of the counties the population was willing to go, and then you fail. Well, here we have, we're, we're, we're coming back into that time, but that's going to come back, and I'm not so sure of the efficacy, but it sounds good. It's kind of like that Tom Mund website, you got all this information of freedom, the cure, freedom is the Bill of Rights that wasn't stopped by, you know, some exception. Well, yeah, the Supreme Court's been making all kinds of exceptions. You're living in your homes in prison, and that's not supposed to be an exception to your freedom? It is. And you're living it, and you're agreeing to it. But Missouri, based on these gun things, Missouri County passed an ordinance to protect against the feds. Newton County in Missouri, in Missouri passed an ordinance this month that would prevent any federal action to infringe a citizen's rights. All federal acts, laws, orders, rules, regulations passed by the federal government, specifically any presidential administration, whether past, present, or future, which infringe the people's right to keep and bear arms as guaranteed by the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution, Article 1, Section 23 of the Missouri Constitution, shall be invalid in the county, shall not be recognized by this county, and specifically rejected by this county, and shall be considered null and void and of no, no effect in this county. And so, really nice sounding stuff, but how long is that going to last? Why is that even a question? Why does a county have to do that with the Second Amendment? And so I think this is, okay, it's a response. 
Is it thought out? Is it well done? Is it going to be enforceable? I've heard a lot of people bring these kinds of amendments to. Like I said, I have to admit that I have not read this in more detail and applied some of the problems that it has. But every one I've seen has major, major defects. They want to call these places sanctuaries. As I've, I've already discussed with you what a sanctuary actually is. It cannot provide protection. And so we have to step back a further back and we have to start asserting something a little different even, even though the county is your seat of power. And I'm not saying I don't disagree with the assertion because at some point something is going to be better than everything else I've heard, which is pretty much nothing. But I'm wondering where this goes if we're not thinking any farther ahead of that. We think that this is going to be that answer when we allowed the condition that required that we have to do this has not been eliminated. And like I said, they don't have to, uh, the amoeba, the parasitic amoeba doesn't have to move so fast. It can watch what you do, and it can decide how it's going to come and take out and live off of your life, suck from your life as it wants to. And I, again, uh, don't know what more to say. If people think they can just complain and not really think into the future, again, the, with the respect to the give and take of all this, well, we're li when maybe people don't really understand you live in an occupied territory. I guess maybe that's really it. You don't, It doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like a World War II movie when the Germans roll into town. But but it is. The feds ruled into town, but they did it way back in 1860s, 1870s. And so they're underneath the skin of this thing, and they've had a long time to become camouflaged to us all. And then they went to an external structure because the technology allowed it. The technocrats helped that in the 30s to advance it. And now we're looking at a global control. Total dominance is what the United States government said years and years ago what they were after. That includes you. Police, uh, you, to use a network of 1,000 and Veshak AI cameras to spotlight a person's every movement. Again, this is the 5G. This is the uh, Internet of Things. So all the people in Missouri saying you're not going to come in here, the feds are not going to come here and take our guns, that's just a spot. It means nothing to the feds. They just as soon have you think that that's fine, and you be quiet, and you think that that's all that you need to do. You've done your thing, you're now protected. A piece of paper helped protect you. It's not what happened with the Declaration of Independence, folks, if you haven't looked into the future. But back here, the surveillance building up, and you're now given notice that there's making legislations coming to give the military more insight into databases of the information and intel that's being created. Uh, the future of total police surveillance just got a whole lot bleaker, Thanks to researchers at in the Indian Institute of Science, the IISC researchers have figured out a way to turn a vast network of CCTV cameras into one ma massive surveillance network which can target a specific vehicle or person. Now, this is just a matter of time. We've seen this before where they can show people pushing buttons, tracking someone around the town, pushing with readers on your license number, identifying your car by description, and AI picks it up as an image, as a set of facts to track through cameras and keep picking you up. It's like facial recognition, but for other things, this is now being told to you. It's not somebody watching a, m a bunch of monitors now and pushing buttons to track you like they used to show coming out of the UK with all their cameras or in China. Now they have machines that will just look at cameras and track someone forever. And this is all tied back to the military. And so at, at some point you look far enough in the future and all you people, the Second Amendment, and think oh, I've got my Second Amendment right. So we got a county that's, uh, that we, we, we have a county now that's a sanctuary. I told you that's not a sanctuary. You don't even know what a sanctuary is if you use that term. Uh, that the feds are not going to be stopped when they decide to move. They don't need the local officer's help. Because so many other things are de decrepit in your fallen down in your county, in your condition. And no ones around you didn't either. So... Back to the Israelis and what they did to out everybody that doesn't get an inoculation. They, they're primary in the news anymore. African governments are crushing opposition using Israeli spyware. You don't think the, the United States police who train with the Israeli government for their type of uh, terror and tyranny on the local, locals uh, isn't being used already with this type of technology that police are now surveilling using AI to follow you around? Yep, we now get the news that's happening in the African governments, and the core is they're not using anybody else's spyware. They're using Israeli spyware. If you don't understand what I've been saying about 
where the core of the technology is coming from and maybe why. An internet, an internet part penetration in smartphone usage increases across Africa. Digital spaces have become increasingly important for organizing political uprisings and opposition movements. In response, several of the continent's regimes have shut down the internet or blocked social media apps. To sidestep the economic costs of global criticism that this is online, this online, these online showdowns incur, governments have turned to digital surveillance technology as a shrewder way to crush all opposition. It's exactly what I was just talking about that's being handed to the United States military. In fact, I wouldn't doubt that they're probably part of this as being through the Israeli government, who wants to crush people. It's their way or the highway. We're tied in. We didn't see Trump do any different with, with the Israeli, whatever, the Zionist state. It's all tied in through the military as well. Again, the representation rate in the government relative to Zionist do citizens is, is astonishing. And yet you think you have a Second Amendment right that's going to mean anything. Yet you think you have the freedom of speech, that you have the right to be free from unjust punishment. You heard the Supreme Court make exceptions to all of that over time. Beyond our generations, folks, I guess is the other point. Beyond us. And notwithstanding all that, we're the beacon of the United States, and then it's supposed to be freedom, and we have freedom from all this. We have to go to the UK to find out maybe there is a better way. Maybe we, we've, we've lost the way in the United States of America. Well, we see the ruling by the EU's highest court finds that the UK, French, and Belgium mass surveillance regimes must respond respect privacy, even in the context of national security. And so for those of us in the United States who've lost our way or watched our way get lost and thrown off the road, the narrow path of uh, where f our freedom reigns, we may want to go back over to the EU and see what their reasoning is and bring it back and start to apply it locally. Because I'm not so sure we have the understanding anymore because we've let it go. Bill would allow tech companies to create local governments. I need to get to this really fast. I'm not going to give it the time it needs. I was sent this weeks and weeks ago. This is sustainable development. This is your corporate fascism. This is government. Bill would allow tech companies to create local governments in, in Nevada. And I wanted to go through, in fact, I can't talk to you about all of it, called innovative tech, Innovation Technology. This is inside the Sustainable Devel Development System. It's highlighted by a, a document that was put together uh, that to discuss from how to get money from the federal government. This is leverage funding. It's all in this document as well. These enterprise, these innovation centers are going to be used to create state uh, cities, which then take on the the abilities of the county. And what they you'll see is that the university system is involved in this already. In fact, they make these uh, this contracts for this. This is already sustainable development, and your university system is already ahead of you on all this. These people are so far ahead of us on taking down this, this the United States and removing you from your constitutional origins to these surrogate adjunct affiliates that are ruled by foreign interests. That Again, there's another, another avenue to go into if you're interested. Everything I've talked about all this before, but now it has a term for us. I wish I had more time for this. I've run out of time. Thank you, Grimner, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. Thank you for all the donations this uh, this month for the year. I made that statement wrong last week. Thank you for all the affiliates and the syndicators and all that for the broadcast. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature willing. another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose. Can a whoop ass feels like. Son, 
I just opened a whole case of whoop ass. 